is Go Beyond, the teaching and preaching ministry with Pastor Michael Eurisha. Michael is an international speaker, songwriter, and the senior pastor of the Judah Ministries International Worship Center, located in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. If you are ever in the greater Pittsburgh area, please come and visit us. Let's now join in with the Judah Ministries praise team at the Worship Center.
Relax in his presence. Don't fight him. Relax. Oh, if you only knew how much he truly loves you. You know, he left us and he sent the Holy Spirit to be our comforter and our guide, our teacher, to relax us in his presence. There's peace there. There is warmth and comfort there because he loves you. Oh, come, come, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Lord. So has the tribulation period begun? And I, I get emails, I get texts, I get messages. You know, where are we, Pastor? Where are we, Pastor? And uh, from all over the world. And actually, it's, it's amazing the international inquiries that I get. And there's a, just a thirst and a hunger um, from those across the seas, you know, inquiring. Be, because, listen, it is not just in America that all this stuff is going crazy. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, Right. So this morning, I want to continue to speak on where are we <clears throat> on the eschatological calendar. In the coming weeks, we're going to take a look at some prophecies that have already been fulfilled and other prophecies that I believe will be fulfilled very, very soon. But first off, I want to show you scripturally, I want to show you in the Word of God how very close to the end that we really are. Now, we all know, but you can't use this as a crutch. The Bible says that no man knows the day or the hour, you know. So those who do not want to study the prophetic word, that's the first thing they throw out there. Well, nobody knows the day or the hour, so why should we know? Listen, that is a misnomer of the teaching of your Bible. So let me dispel that misnomer right now. Jesus said, when you see the fig tree... You'll know the season. The fig tree is Israel. 
Israel was planted May 14th, 1948. The fig tree is blooming. Does somebody have a prophetic ear and hear what I'm saying in the house this morning? So we will know the season. No, we will not know the day or the hour for the rapture. But we listen, we will know the day of the beginning of the tribulation period, which I'll get into in a minute here. Now, how many of you have heard me say, listen, I don't believe that we're really living in the last days any longer. I don't believe that anymore. Because I now believe that we're in the last minutes. We are absolutely in the last minutes. And that's not just a cute little slogan to create urgency. It's theologically correct. And today, I'm going to prove it to you. So follow me. Watch this now. In his second letter, the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Peter basically quotes Psalm 90 verse 4 while he is addressing the end of days in his letter. Uh, so this is all in context of the end of time, right before the return of Jesus Christ. Uh, Peter wrote this passage because the Christians of that day were being mocked, they were being ridiculed about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because how many of you know there's a lot of teaching in the quote-unquote church today that there is no rapture? Oh, somebody needs to hear me this morning. Full gospel churches don't believe in a, a, a rapture. They, they don't believe that, you know, they believe there's this new, you know, kingdom now theology that's out there that the church is going to usher in. That's nowhere found in your Bible. So do you see the, the, the uh, error in the doctrine? So the Christians were being mocked that day because they believed in the rapture. How many of you believe in a rapture here? Listen, when you verbalize that, honey, somebody's going to mock you. Okay? So here, watch what Peter writes. Uh, I don't have the scripture up there, but in 2 uh, Peter 3.3 3, it says, Above all, above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. In other words, they're saying, where is your Lord? Where is the second coming? He's not returning to the earth. Your forefathers said the same thing, just like today. Just like today, the church, especially by the media, is mocked. And remember, listen, church, people don't even have to say anything to mock you. They don't even have to say anything to mock the Word of God. They shout it aloud with their debaucherous and faithless lifestyles. Faithlessness. Here, let me just drop this scripture to you. Let judgment begin in the house of God. Because how many of you know there's a whole lot of faithlessness in the quote-unquote church today? So 2 Peter 3, 8, we do have this verse up there. It says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. This is all in the light of people mocking about the coming of the Lord. Peter goes on, he says, with the Lord a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. Basically, he is quoting, once again, Psalm 90, verse 4, which essentially says the same thing. Now, I believe Peter used the exact ratio that God wanted him to use. How many of you know the God, Word of God is perfect? It doesn't just throw out statistics. Are you all hearing me, somebody? He used the ratio 1,000 to 1. So if this were an analogy, just an analogy, Peter could have said a, a day is like a week, or a day is like 10 years, or a day is like 10,000 years. No, but he said a day is like 1,000 years. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So if we were to take a look at a timeline, if you could put that up there for me, Caleb. If we were to look at a timeline from Adam until now, Here's kind of what it would look like. This is a seven-year slide. There's 6,000 years of history and 1,000 years into the future. So from Adam to Abraham, you have 2,000 years roughly. So at Adam, you have the birth 
of the human race. 2,000 years later, you have the birth of a Jewish nation with Abraham. From Abraham to Yeshua, to Jesus, we have another approximate 2,000 years for a total of 6,000 years, or I'm sorry, for a total of 4,000 years till Jesus came. And then at 2,000 years, we have the birth of the church. If you're all still tracking with me, say amen. So there's, you have a total of 6,000 years until today. 2,000 years to Abraham, 2,000 years to Jesus, 2,000 years to where we are right now. So we had the birth of the human race. We had the birth of the Jewish nation. We had the birth of the church. Are you still tracking with me? We're about to have a birth of a new kingdom coming. The last 1,000 years, or the last day, the seventh day, will be the birth of the kingdom of God on earth. It will be the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. This seventh day is also known as a Sabbath rest. Is somebody getting the picture here this morning? After the millennial reign, which would be a total of 7,000 years, beginning with Adam, Revelation chapter 22 states that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. The old has completed its cycle. In other words, its cycle of seven, seven uh, years or seven prophetic days, if you will, and then the new has come. So after 7,000 years, a new heaven and a new earth is about to begin. So is everybody still tracking with, with, with me? Because this, I know, listen, I'm, this is like a fire hose coming at you. There's going to be a lot of information so I need you to digest this. So a lot of people claim that we're in the last days. We're in the last days. You hear that thrown around, and, and it's true. It's true. We are in the last days. However, in reality, biblically, the last days began 2,000 years ago. The Bible's very clear about that, all right? Rem remember, saints of God, we must understand the Word of God. Let's look at Acts chapter 2, please. Verse 14, Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 14, the Bible says, Then Peter, the same one who wrote a thousand years is a day, then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem. Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Let me give you a little backstory of what's going on here. This is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost at the day of Pentecost. They've all just been filled with the Holy Spirit. Cloven tongues of fire fell on each one of them, and they began to uh, go around. They all began to speak in tongues, and the, neighbor, the local neighborhood thought they were all drunk. Y'all with me? All right. Here's what Peter says. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. No. This, somebody shout this. this. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. So do you see right there that the last days began at the day of Pentecost? This is that. I think the King James Verse. There used to be a brother in our old church. He says, well, if this isn't that, I want a whole lot of that until this comes. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour my spirit out on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Cats like me are having dreams nowadays. Even on my servants, both men and women. Come on, ladies. Both men and women, I will pour out my spirit when? In those days. It's all, it began 2,000 years ago. And they will prophesy. Watch this now. Peter kind of moves and gives us an overview. I will show... This is he's speaking for God. I will show wonders in the heaven above, signs on the earth below, 
blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. How many of you know we had some blood moons here just a few years ago? Before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. This is the best verse there. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That should excite somebody in this house. So Peter is basically speaking to a group of Jews. He's saying, baby, listen, this is not just for you any longer, but it's for the Gentiles as well. Come on, Gentiles. Pastor Michael will be right back with today's message. If you would like to hear or watch other messages by Pastor Michael on your computer or electronic device or learn more about our ministry, please visit our website at www.judaministries.net and click on Go Beyond. Now let's get back to today's message. So Peter sets a marker of time. So according to the Word of God, the last days actually began 2,000 years ago. Let's go back to my slide, please. Let's take a look at it. Adam arrives on Sunday, which is the first day of the week, and he continues his heritage, his peoples, continue through Monday, which is two days, Sunday and Monday. Abraham arrives 2,000 years or two days later, which would be a Tuesday, and the nation of Israel lasts for 2,000 years through Tuesday and Wednesday. That's the nation of Israel. Are you still tracking with me? Say amen. amen. Jesus arrives on Thursday, which is another prophecy that we won't even get into here today. We don't have the time. But Jesus arrives on Thursday, and the church age continues for two days until Friday. In other words, Thursday and Friday night. Because how many of you know a Jewish day begins at sundown? Y'all with me? Sundown begins a Jewish day. So the church age is for Thursday until Friday evening, also known as the coming Jewish Sabbath. So once again, we are just minutes from the Sabbath, also known as the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell somebody the sun is setting and Sabbath is about to begin. Come on, church. Now, let me show you why we are in the last minutes, maybe the last seconds of time before Jesus returns and calls us home for the rapture. So I hope we have some algebra students here. So you might have to get your little phone out and your calculator here for a minute. I want to take you through algebra class for a minute. Watch this now. I have a slide. There we go. Beautiful. 1,000 years in biblical math, as Peter in Psalms 90 explained, is 1,000 years. I'm sorry, 1,000 years is one day. Or, in other words, it's a 24-hour period. So if you want to find out how long each hour is uh, in years, you divide 1,000 by 24. 1,000 years divided by 24 is 41.6. So a, if uh, a day is 1,000 years, one hour equals 41.6 years. You tracking with me? Say amen. One hour ago, prophetically, on God's clock, one hour ago was 1979. 1895 was just three hours ago. The United States of America is only about six hours old. Y'all with me? Let me get a little more detailed with you here. Watch. So a day is like a thousand years. If you want to find out how long each minute is in years, you divide 41.6, the hours. Divide that by 60 because there's 60 minutes in one hour. 41.6 divided by 60 minutes is 0.7 years. So one minute equals 0.7 years, approximately nine months. It's one minute. Do you know two minutes ago, we knew nothing of COVID-19? Yeah. 
We lived in a different world just two minutes ago. I hope somebody is seeing this this morning. Do you see how much can change in just a couple of prophetic minutes? 30 minutes ago, just a half an hour ago, was Y2K. Does everybody remember that a half an hour ago? Some of you probably still have some dried beans or some dried food. Still eating them 21 years later. The world was coming to an end. Just trying to give you some prophetic perspective here, church. So when I say that we are in the last minutes, remember... 30 minutes in the future from today is about 21 years. Now, I absolutely believe that there is a very good chance that we will be raptured and Jesus will return well before 30 minutes of time has expired. Come on, if you're with me, put your hands together. So now you can say, when people ask you, you can say with absolute theological certainty that Jesus can come at any minute. Has the tribulation begun? A question that a lot of believers are asking from around the world with all the craziness that's going on, has the tribulation period started, Pastor? You see, COVID affected the entire earth. Do you hear me? I heard one pastor say, he said the last time something affected the entire earth like COVID was the flood at Noah's time. Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be for the coming of the Son of Man. Before we move on, I want to define some term, uh, terminology. I don't want to assume that everyone is up on end time or eschatological terms. So let me just define the tribulation period, what that means. It's also known in the Bible as Daniel's 70th week. Actually, you could turn your Bibles to Dan Daniel 9. We're going to get there in a minute. Daniel's 70th week. It's also known as the time of Jacob's trouble or Israel's trouble because the tribulation is all about the salvation of the Jewish nation. Jacob's trouble. It's also referred to as the Day of the Lord in prophetic language, a day can be interpreted as a season or an age or an era, a period of time, not necessarily a 24-hour period. The tribulation period is, here's the definition, is the last seven-year period of time, or ten minutes if you will, that there will be on earth prior to the return and the millennial 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ. That's the tribulation period. During this seven-year period, there will be unequal destruction on earth, Jesus said, such as there never has been and such as there never will be again. This is detailed in your Bible in Revelation 6, chapter 6 through chapter 19. It describes the tribulation period, the seven-year period, in great detail. So let's get back to our question. Pastor, has the tribulation period begun? The short answer is an emphatic no. It's percolating, baby. We're in the shadows, but it has not begun. Well, how can you say that with such certainty? How do you know with uh, such certainty? Because the Bible is explicit as to the event that will start that seven-year clock. It's found in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Let's take a look at that scripture, 9, Daniel 9, 27. 
So if you ever get the question, if anyone asks you, has the tribulation period begun, in reality, this is the only scripture verse that you need to know. Daniel 9, 27. We will support it with others, but this is it. This is where it's found. Now, remember, Daniel's written about 600 years before Jesus Christ while the Israelites were in captivity in Babylon. How many of you know God still works through Babylon? Oh, I don't think y'all heard me there. <laughs> All right, here we go. Daniel 9, 27, one verse. He, meaning the Antichrist, will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. Somebody say one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering, and at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. All right. So let's dissect this passage because it's loaded with end time information. The confirming of the covenant with many nations for one seven means a seven year period. All right, Pastor, how do you know that this one seven means seven years? All right. Beginning in Daniel chapter 9, in verse 20, we read about the 62 sevens and the seven sevens. Some of your Bibles will say weeks 62 weeks and seven weeks for a total nine of 69 weeks or 69 sevens until Messiah arrives. That clock would start at the signing of the uh, decree by King Artaxerxes in Nehemiah chapter 2 as prophesied by Daniel in chapter 9 earlier in the chapter. So using a week as a seven years means 69 weeks would be equivalent to 490 years. I know I'm throwing a lot of math at you, but you might, you know, might have to get the CD or to watch the video to get this all again. But this is important. 490 years. If you track uh, from that, from the day that the decree was signed, on the very day that that decree was signed for the Jews to return to Israel, Jesus rode in on a donkey and they shouted, Hosanna! Yeah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the first time on the 10th of Nisan, 30, uh, 32 AD, that Israel recognized their king, Yeshua, and I'm here to tell somebody it was 173,880 days, or exactly 69 weeks from the day Artaxerxes signed the decree. I'm talking about accuracy to the day. Y'all still with me? So this is how we determine one seven is a seven year period of time. So seven is one week in the prophetic language or seven years. Uh, so confirming of the covenant for a seven year period will start the clock for the final week of years. That's why it's uh, referred to as Daniel's 70th week because 69 weeks have already been fulfilled until Messiah comes. As Isaiah wrote, he will be cut off. As Daniel wrote, he will be cut off for a time. We don't know. There's a pause in there, the 2,000 year period that we're living in. No man knows the day or the hour. All right, now, come on now. Somebody coming with me now? Come on, talk to me, church. So nobody knows the day or the hour when that next clock is going to start. But baby, listen to me. It's going to start. Here's how we know it's going to start. Watch this, right? So this is known as Daniel's 70th week until the end or until the wrath that is poured out on Satan, supporting scriptures, Daniel 7, Revelation 12, 13, and 19, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Matthew 24, Jesus Christ himself even referred to Daniel 9, 27 when he talked about the abomination that causes desolation. Now, in the middle of the seven, in the middle of the seven-year period, in other words, in three and a half years, or more exactly as your Bible will tell you, 1,260 days to be exact, 
The Antichrist will end the sacrifice in the temple and claim to be God. For those living in the tribulation period, listen, you will be able to set your Google calendar by this event. So if the church is raptured out here and you're watching this video somehow, because you know today everything's being censored. Well, it's another message coming. How many of you know that's true? You'll be able to set your Google calendar by the day that decree is signed. Is there other evidence? Watch. The other evidence that the tribulation period has not begun is due to the magnitude of the calamity that will take place right at the beginning of the tribulation period or shortly after the covenant is confirmed. The Bible is precise. So this rise of COVID and the riots that we've seen throughout the earth for the last seven or eight months, the civil unrest that we've been having in the USA, the killing of Christians in India and in Pakistan and in other places around the world. Listen, these are just little birth pains, honey, that Jesus spoke about. This is nothing, nothing compared to what is to come. But make no mistake, the birth pains have begun and you women know that who have given birth, once the birth pains begin, honey, there's no turning back. You can't turn back that clock, baby. So let's take a look at what the beginning of the tribulation period looks like. Watch. In Revelation 6, you can write this down in your notes, look it up later. This is the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period, and here's what Revelation chapter 6 basically draws out. Number one, the first seal, which is the white horse, portrays the Antichrist and the false prophet taking their position in earth. Revelation 6, verse 2. A false peace will come to the earth prior to the tribulation period. Right? There's going to be chaos, chaos, perilous times. Somebody's going to step onto the scene and bring some peace. Shall we say the calm before the storm? So there will be peace before destruction. Number two, Revelation 6.6. 6. The world economy will completely collapse where it will take a day's wage to buy a loaf of bread. We are not there yet, at least in most of the world, but have you seen the economic impact that COVID has had on around the earth? Come on, church. We know of nations that are starving because of COVID lockdown. Oh, they're not getting a $600 stimulus check. Oh, I wish somebody would hear this message this morning. We need to read this gospel not through political eyes, not through American eyes, but through prophetic eyes. Do you see the shaking? Come on, church. Do you see it? Number three, Revelation 6, 8. The pale horse kills a fourth of the earth by sword, famine, disease, and wild beast. That's nearly two billion people. Have we seen anything like that yet? No, no. Revelation 6, 12. There will be unpar an unparalleled earthquake and stars will fall from the sky that will completely change the landscape of the earth. And all of this in just 10 verses in Revelation chapter 6. And there are still 12 more chapters of unimaginable destruction that will leave the earth completely decimated. So for all of you who might be watching, who worship the earth, the closing down of the XL pipeline, the eliminating of fracking and all the carbon emissions, those of you who choose to worship Mother Earth, choose to worship the Creator, rather, I'm sorry, the creation, rather than the Creator, this 
is the outcome for your idol called Mother Earth. Watch this. Here's how chapter 6 ends. 15 and 17, verses 15 and 17. After all these things happen, the four horses, what I just read to you, here's what happens. Then the kings of the earth, princes, generals, in other words, high military officials, the rich and the mighty, let me just insert some names. In other words, folks like Xi Jinping, Kim Jong-un, Vladimir Putin, Ayatollah Khomeini, George Soros, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, I hope somebody's hearing me. The kings of the earth, the generals, the rich and the mighty, and watch this, everybody else, both slave and free. In other words, this is justice for all, not the same. Come on, somebody hear what I'm saying here. Rich and poor alike. This is not some kind of social justice which is being preached today. This is God's justice coming. Oh my God. Watch this. Both slave and free, along with the kings of the earth, hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. So everybody, let me say it this way, everybody. Uh-huh. Everybody. Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos will be hiding in the cave with the pauper and they'll be crying like little girls. They're going to call to the mountains. Listen, I'm not making up my own words. I'm not giving you some kind of an insightful pro I'm reading you the word of God, somebody. They called to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can withstand it? The people of the earth will finally get it that Jesus Christ is the one true living God. I wish somebody in this house would give him a praise. Pastor Michael will be right back with today's message. If you would like to hear or watch other messages by Pastor Michael on your computer or electronic device or learn more about our ministry, please visit our website at www.judaministries.net and click on Go Beyond. Now let's get back to today's message. can withstand it. Huh. The answer to that rhetorical question is nobody. Ha. Huh. But baby, that's why we rejoice today. Because we don't need to hide in a cave. We all are already hidden in Jesus Christ. God's wrath, listen, listen, God's wrath was already poured out on us on an old rugged cross outside the old city. Though, so therefore we do not have to experience it again. Somebody in a house should put their hands together and give our God a praise. We'll be long gone. Watch Revelation 3.10. We have this verse. It says, watch, since you, this is speaking to you, since you have kept my command, have you kept this command? To endure patiently. I, Jesus speaking, will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test who? The inhabitants of the earth, not the church of Jesus Christ. Come on, church. So have we seen anything even near to those few examples of what the beginning of the tribulation period looks like? 
Nothing even close. So we're not there yet. Are you all with me? It's percolating. We're close. We're close. But when the hedge is removed, the church of Jesus Christ, when the restraint is removed, all hell will break out. You know, let me give you a little revelation here. You know you're still the salt of the earth. You may not feel like it, honey, but you're still the light of the world. Thank God it's not contingent on us. You're still the restraint in this world, believe it or not. So how close are we? I just gave you a 7,000 year or 7 day timeline as I see it. I believe that we are within minutes. Let's take a little closer look at this passage in Daniel 9.27 because there are some important time markers in here. Daniel 9.27. He, meaning the Antichrist, will confirm a covenant with many nations. For one seven, in the middle of the seven, he will put an end to the sacrifice and offering, and at the temple he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed. How many of you know it's already decreed that Satan's going to have this wrath poured out on him until it's poured out on him? So first, the Bible says he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. So we all know that it will be a seven-year agreement. Y'all with me? When that agreement is signed, honey, you could set, set your clock. It will be seven years exactly. Now watch this. The word confirm, right, confirm an agreement, in the original Hebrew text is kabar. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But it's similar to the Aramaic word, which you might be familiar with, akbar. You've heard the phrase, alwa akbar. Y'all heard that. It's a common phrase that Muslims use to greet one another in Aramaic. It's just a greeting. Alwa Akbar. Sadly, most of the time when we hear the phrase as Westerners, we kind of link it with suicide bombers because that's what they yell just prior to blowing themselves up and killing themselves. Also, most believe, most believe when they hear that phrase, they just think it means God is great. That's close, but it's not what that phrase means. The phrase does not mean God is great. It means, watch this, this is important. God is greater. Akbar, greater or stronger. Gabar in the Hebrew language means the same thing. It means to make something in place greater or stronger. Y'all with me? Say yes. All right. Next slide, the Abraham Accord. Why is this important? I taught on this last fall. Because, here's why it's important, because one of the most prophetic things that Donald Trump fulfilled as a president of the United States was to get Israel to normalize relations with the UAE and several other Arab nations. It's called the Abraham Accord. Once again, you could go watch the whole study on that on our YouTube channel. So right now, listen church, there is an agreement in place. The table is set. The Antichrist will come along and he will confirm or gabar, he will make greater, he will make stronger the agreement with many nations, including the Palestinians. Well, Pastor, why are the Palestinians such an important player? Here's why. Because they are the people who oppose, who are preventing the Jews from worshiping on the Temple Mount. Remember in Daniel, this is all about the Temple Mount. These end times are all about 35 acres of property sitting in Jerusalem. You believe that? 35 acres. You have a whole world, but it's about 35 acres. However, the Palestinians will have to sign an agreement because that's the only way that the Jews can resume their animal sacrifice in the temple and thus fulfill Daniel 9, 27, 2 Thessalonians 2, and Revelation 13. So that passage in Daniel 9 presents a challenge because there is currently no temple in Jerusalem and the verse is specific here as well in 2 Thessalonians that the Antichrist or the son of perdition will exalt himself in the temple. It's clear. It's clear. 
So once again, as of right now, let me timestamp this. This is January 24th, 2021. There is no temple on the Temple Mount, and there will not be a temple built there until an agreement between the Jews and the Palestinians is struck. The Abraham Accord needs to be gabar. It needs to be made stronger. It needs to be made greater. It needs to be expanded. So listen, we're going to pick off every piece of meat from this bone here. Uh, Daniel 9, 27, let's read it again. So he will gabar, make greater a covenant, the Abraham Accord, with many, including the Palestinians, for one seven, a seven-year period. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to the sacrifice and the offering. So the sacrifices must be resumed at some point for this passage to be fulfilled. If you're with me, say amen, somebody. And at the temple, he will set up the abomination that causes the desolation until the end that is decreed and poured out on him. So in the middle of the seven, in other words, three and a half years into the tribulation period, 1260 days to be exact, the Antichrist will put an end to the sacrifice in the temple and claim to be God. That is what is known by the abomination that causes desolation spoken by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24. So my friend, the Abraham Accord is already in place. It's ready to be made greater. Well, pastor, what about the temple? Good question. That, my friend, is a prophecy that is also about to be fulfilled. I believe that many living today, I believe many living today, will witness the temple being constructed. The church will be gone, but a temple will be destructed. I believe we are in that generation. The Temple Institute in Jerusalem already has everything needed to build the new temple. Everything, including the clothing, the reestablished Sanhedrin, down to the red heifer for the ceremonial Cleansing. Yes, I'm speaking about a red cow. It's prophetic. About 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, they had the birth of a red cow, a red heifer in Israel. The first time in like 2,000 years. Does somebody see the accuracy of the Word of God? Down to a red cow. There's even a thing with snails with the blue dye that they get out for the clothing for the high priest. They found him for the first time in thousands of years. Listen, church, our God is God. Once an agreement is made, the signing of this declaration, whereby the Jews could once again enter the Temple Mount, build their temple, and begin their sacrifice. Once that is signed, it will only take a few months to erect a new temple. How close are we to the tribulation period? Minutes. I believe we're minutes. Saints of God, it's on the horizon. I believe that we're absolutely living in the shadows. I'm not saying these things to scare you, but rather to prepare you because your flight is about to take place. Come on, church. Jesus says, when you see these things happening, what do he say? Look up. Your redemption is drawing nigh. Come on, you with me, church? Come on, put your hands together and give them a praise. Hi, I'm Michael Yurisha, and I hope you enjoyed today's edition of Go Beyond. Listen, I have a very special offer for you. And no, 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 you don't have to go grab your checkbook. You don't have to grab your debit card or your credit card. What I have to offer you today is absolutely F-R-E-E free. And what that free gift is for you today is the gift of salvation. You know, the Bible is a good news, bad news story. The bad news is the Bible says that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that means everybody sinned. But the good news is that God so loved you and me, the world, 
that he gave his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever would believe in him would have everlasting life. The Bible also says that salvation is a gift of God. And the only way you receive that gift is through faith. Would you put your faith in Jesus today? Would you receive that gift of salvation today? It's easy as admitting that you're a sinner. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I realize that today. And secondly, believing in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And thirdly, C, confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. So pray that prayer with me. Say, Father, I realize I'm a sinner. Today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And with my mouth, I confess that Jesus is Lord. My friend, if you've prayed that prayer with the sincerity of your heart, you're saved, you're born again, you've been filled with God's Holy Spirit, and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Well, listen, we'd love to rejoice with you if you've prayed that prayer with sincerity. Please reach out to us, write to us, and let us know that you're a new family member in the body of Christ. The address is right there on your screen, 525 Market Street, McKeesport, Pennsylvania, 15132. Or you could simply drop us an email at gobeyond at judaministries.net. That's gobeyond judaministries.net. God bless you, and we hope to see you next time here as we go beyond. God bless. To proclaim the gospel.